Bienvenidos, familia hermosa. Es un gusto tenerlos de nueva cuenta aquí con nosotros. Vamos a ver este programa juntos, que será de mucha bendición. Somos sus pastores, Estrella Mumba y mi esposo, Ramson Mumba. We're so glad you could join us for today's broadcast, as especially we are dealing with one of the subjects that are absolutely dear to our hearts. Today we're going to learn something about relationships because we believe that nothing significant happens in your life outside of all the relationships that you are involved in. And as we get into the Word of God today, our prayer is that there'll be some nuggets of wisdom and some insights that will help you make better decisions because we believe that the essence, the reward of what you get in life is not only what you become, but also who you get the privilege to spend your life with. And we look forward to seeing you after the broadcast. El Shaddai International Christian Center is a community of people who are passionate about sharing the love, hope, goodness, and purpose of God to our generation. The El Shaddai I see is a prophetic church. It's a church with healing in their wings. It's a church that just don't know how to worship, but knows how to take free the word of God to a generation. It's a church that is vested and founded on revelation knowledge. It's a church that will prophesy life to a dying world. El Shaddai International Christian Center is a global vision with churches on three continents, four different countries, and 10 different cities. Our meetings are family-oriented with vibrant, extravagant worship and inspiring practical teaching from God's Word. It would be our pleasure to welcome you to this family, and we look forward to seeing you soon. Let's say it like we mean it. This is my Bible. Is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I can do it. What it says I can do, I have what it says I have. Tonight, I will be taught the Word of God, and I boldly confess that my mind is alert and my heart is receptive, and I will never be the same again because of the incorruptible, indestructible, ever-living Word of God. Therefore, I declare in the name of Jesus that this is my receiving day. This is my receiving day, and I expect a miracle today. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Father, we thank you. We honor you. We came to glorify your precious name. It's so good just to be welcome in your presence and stand before you without fear, guilt, shame, or inferiority because we are washed in the blood of Jesus. We are the righteousness of God in Christ. I thank you, Lord, that I am anointed today to teach your word with simplicity and understanding. And I also thank you that these, your precious people, are equally anointed with an anointing of understanding and courage to hear and to do your word. For wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, Lord, today we choose to get wisdom. And in all of our getting, we get understanding. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. The book of 1 John chapter 4, please. The book of 1 John chapter 4. We are going to take some time today to talk about, listen to this, the dance of fear in relationships. The dance of fear in relationships. What we want to do today is establish what it is that poisons what could otherwise be just wholesome relationships. We want to begin to understand why some of us behave in ways that we didn't even think that we were going to ever have to do it like that. But somewhere along the line, somewhere along the way, in the process of living, you get beaten so many times that you begin to develop what we call defense mechanisms that on the one hand are excellent for you because they prevent the same type of hurt from happening. But on the other hand, they prove to be counterproductive because they are shutting you away and off from the things that would otherwise enrich your life. 
So what we want to do today is be sensitive to the fact that we're not saying throw away all the boundaries, but we are also saying that the boundaries must be porous. They must have the ability to let the good things in while at the same time they keep the good things out. Can you say amen? Now, in the book of 1 John chapter 4, verse 20, the scripture says, If a man says, I love God, but hates his brother, he is a liar. Now, that's pretty strong, isn't it? For he who does not love the brother whom he sees, how can he love God whom he hasn't seen? Check this out. Here is an excuse that we are using as human beings to say, I, I love God. I mean, me and God, we got it going on. We're tight. But we don't have the same persuasion when it comes to human relationships. Or with God, we got it going on. But the Apostle John also gives us the reason why we think we got it going on. And he says, how can you say you love a God that you haven't seen? and hate the brother whom you see. The question is also the answer. The reason you say you love a God that you haven't seen and hate the brother whom you see is simply because the brother whom you see is able to irritate you in a way that the God that you don't see can provoke the same feeling in you. So we're dealing with proximity. We're dealing with Nearness and closeness. Notice, it's easy to be nice from a distance, but it's harder to be nice up close and personal. That's why when you're all just going out for a coffee, you are very nice to each other. But the closer you begin to determine to come together, the more it seems you start provoking the wrong thing out of each other. And at one point, it was all a bed of roses, but now it seems like he's bringing out the worst in you, she's bringing out the worst in you, and the only thing that has changed is the nearness, the proximity. Because while they were distant, it was okay for you to just think whatever they said didn't mean much because you could go home. But now what if you can't go home and you are in the same home? I'm already preaching better than you are, amen. Uh, what if now uh, they just can't do things, they just can't spend money and it's a neutral decision? What if now it affects your financial standing and what you do with your family? Because at one point you just say, well, they like to spend their money. But now when they spend, you are also spent. What do you do in those moments? Am I preaching to somebody yet? And so <laughs> John says, okay, I know you love God. But it's easier to love God because you don't see him. So here is how we're going to determine whether or not your love is genuine, whether your love is authentic, whether or not your love has substance to it. If you can do the same thing for the person that's close to you as you do for the one that's distant, then we can tell that your love is authentic. One of the most uh, befuddling things, uh, shocking things, for those of you that haven't had the privilege to listen to so many human beings and, 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 and listen to their story, is how that in any relationship, one guy can be saying he is the best thing, and everybody at church would believe this is a good man. Yet his wife can't stand him. It's easier to be nice to the sisters at church. Don't worry, I'm going to get to where you are. I'm just beginning with somebody else. <laughs> but it's when you go home, you want to open the door for everybody else, but you slam it in the face of your wife. It's easy to overlook an offense from a stranger than it is to forget what the person you love did to you. 
And so while we cut other people some slack, you understand the expression, the colloquialism, the metaphor, while we give other people some latitude, we give them a lot more grace, it's harder to express the same degree of grace and latitude to the ones that are near us because we are invested. So he says, if a man says, I love God, first of all, you have to understand all of us who say, I love God, what we really mean is, I want to be pleasing to God. And we know that in order to be pleasing to God, we have to develop some character. That's the traditional teaching. But we know that my character is a function of certain decisions. Here is the dilemma of it. Go to Matthew chapter 22. The book of Matthew chapter 22. Are you with me so far? Something happens when you're trying to love people that are close to you. Because here is the bottom line while you turn to Matthew. The same people that can love you the most are the people that will hurt you the most. Your greatest pain and pleasure will come from the same place. Your most intimate relationships can also be your sickness and your medicine. Everything that happens to you will happen in the context of relationships. So you have to find this delicate dance. Otherwise, you give more than you're getting out, and sooner or later you're depleted, and you are trying to love like God, but you're not God. I didn't get even one amen. Because most Christians would rather say this, I'm just like God, and therefore I act like God. Yes, we know you are just like God, but guess what? You're still under construction. God is pure love. He's not moved by how he feels. Come on, somebody. But you are moved by how you feel. Thank you for your enthusiasm. He's not affected by what you say, but you are affected by what people say, especially if they mean something to you. See, strangers can say all kinds of foolishness. It don't bother you a lot. That's why Jesus said, you know, who do men say that I am? And they got through the list. You know, some say you're John the Baptist, Elijah, one of the prophets, and blah, blah, blah. And it didn't even bother him that he could have been Jeremiah. It didn't bother him that they had a case of mistaken identity. But the issue that affected him was when he turned around to the people he loved and he had invested three and a half years of his life and said to them, but who do you say that I am? And instead of knowing knowing who he was. One out of 12 is the only one that understood him. And the silence of the 11 is what kills you in your human relationships. The 12 you spent your life with and giving your best to, when you are in trouble, they don't speak up for you. They don't understand you. Only one out of 12 knows you accurately and therefore can stand up for you. But the silence of the majority kills you because you've invested yourself and what they think is not just a neutral thing anymore. El Shaddai International Christian Center is a community of people who are passionate about sharing the love, hope, goodness, and purpose of God to our generation. The El Shaddai, I see, is a prophetic church. It's a church with healing in their wings. It's a church that just don't know how to worship, but knows how to take free the Word of God to a generation. It's a church that is vested and founded on revelation knowledge. It's a church that will prophesy life to a dying world. El Shaddai International Christian Center is a global vision with churches on three continents, four different countries, and 10 different cities. Our meetings are family-oriented with vibrant, extravagant worship and inspiring practical teaching from God's Word. It would be our pleasure to welcome you to this family, and we look forward to seeing you soon. You invested yourself in that marriage, in that 
relationship as boyfriend and girlfriend. You invested yourself in that situation as sisters and as brothers. And when push came to shove, they were absent without leave. That's the silence of the 11. Now notice here, Matthew 22, is that where we are? Yeah. Verse 37, Jesus said to him, you shall love the Lord your God. These are the great commandments, because that's what they're asking him. But remember, this is old covenant, because we're going to clean this. With all your heart, with all your soul, this is the first and great commandment, and the second one is what? Like unto it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Let's be honest tonight. I know you are like Jesus, but the truth of the matter is you will not love anybody in your flesh more than you love yourself. The problem is you beat up on yourself, that's why you beat up on me. You condemn yourself, that's why you condemn your neighbor. You judge yourself harshly, that's why you are a harsh critic of everybody else. He said you love your neighbor as much as you love yourself. Now here is the problem. You are a flawed human being. And now, you don't love your neighbor as much as you love yourself because you know, this is both the source of my pain and my pleasure. What do you do when you don't know whether or not this is going to be a pleasurable experience or a painful experience? Imagine as a child growing up in a family where you didn't know whether or not your parents approved of you. Those of you who have had the misfortune to experience that will know that that is the most disorientating experience because on the one hand, you want and are seeking the approval of the authority figures, but you don't know whether today they are happy with you or they are not happy with you. And so you begin to learn to play this game. You come to church, some, some churches, you don't know whether, whether the pastor likes you or they are already ready to bite your head off. Can I pray to somebody? So you don't know whether to be happy. That's why most churches, have, they, 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 they've got a family that controls the church. If that family is not happy, nobody happy today. I mean, that church, maybe not a family, has got some deacons who are demon-possessed. And the whole church is deacon-possessed. Can I preach to somebody? And there's always a group of people that seem to have a bigger stake than everybody else. So you are trying to give yourself to God, but you withdraw because at the same time, while you want to invest yourself in the church, somebody else is walking all over you. And so, ladies and gentlemen, herein begins the dance of fear in relationships. And if you haven't danced yet, I submit to you that you have, you just didn't know it. There is not a single human being in here who has not danced or performed this dance, and yet at the same time, in some seasons, it's more amplified than others. God said this to the Apostle Paul, I have, I have called you, but I've also delivered you from the people to whom I've called you. What a profound thing. I called you and sent you to the Gentiles, but I've also delivered you from the Gentiles. In other words, if you're going to need their approval, you won't be able to love them and minister to them effectively. Until you don't need the people that are in relationship with you, you can't completely love them as you should. And if you do, they will take advantage of you. You see, what you must understand is that in a relationship, you are, I'm talking about a mature relationship. I'm not talking about, you know, parent-child. I'm talking about, you know, equal relationship. Now, some marriages are not equal because one is the parent. And the nun, that turns you off more than when you have to be mama to him or daddy to her. Come on, somebody. Unless you are daddy, you know. Mm -hmm. 
who your daddy now? Why are you looking at me like I've crawled out from under a rock? In a normal relationship, you are responsible to each other, but not for each other. It's not my job to control you. It's your job to get a hold of yourself. It's not our job to control your temper. It's your job to control your temper. Come on, somebody. You bring something, she brings something. Everybody brings something. But notice this. Relationships are shattered intentionally and unintentionally because people keep hurting each other. The scripture says, even in laughter, the heart might be aching. And that's the schizophrenia of human relationships. We have to come out smiling in society because you know society doesn't deal in truth. They don't want to see your pain. Opportunity doesn't want to see your need. Opportunity wants to see your seed. So you can't go looking for a job, looking desperate. Even though you're desperate, you got to give off an air of options. But you know I need to be hired. Yet if you act like this is the last thing you're going to hire me, they will not hire you. You know this is the guy you really want. But at the beginning, you don't have to tell him, please, I need you, help me, don't go, I need you. No, 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 no. If you do, he runs. So you got to learn the art of what I call dark work. You are like a dog. On top of the water, you look calm, but nobody knows how quickly you're paddling underneath <laughs> to make it. That's the schizophrenia of life. Some of you put your feet up so everybody sees you paddling, and they run. You know, he would have stayed, but you started being needy too quickly. <laughs> Two weeks into the relationship, you're asking him to help you with the rent. <laughs> I'm going to come back over. I'm not ready for, I'm not ready for, the, <laughs> for the life application. Let's just set out the... <laughs> so he's thinking, if I'm paying the rent after two weeks... In four weeks, I'll be paying for a boob job. Because <laughs> you've also been communicating your insecurities. I don't like these. I wish they were bigger. That's not what you tell him the first time. Look like you like everything you got, and you should, because that's all you're going to get. <laughs> Thank you for your encouragement. I'll take the one amen. He thought your butt was nice, but you kept drawing attention to, oh, it is so big. Look. <laughs> Have you thought about the reason he came is because he likes big? <laughs> I think we better go back to the scripture because some of you just want to say kumbaya, Lord. Yeah, he kumbaya through him. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So, we settle for mediocre relationships. And yet the pain keeps growing. And what happens is we have legitimate needs. Here is what, is what the dance is. It's okay to have a list. One time <laughs> a woman came up to see me in her late 40s for counseling. And of course I don't counsel somebody alone. A woman. But by the time she finished giving me the list... I looked at that list, I said, even Jesus couldn't meet this need. <laughs> She'd written this list out. I thought, wow, no wonder there is no man alive. That's good enough for this woman. Because what she's looking for is an angel. And the angels, see, she's turned a legitimate need and desire into something that is now an expectation. Let me give you another example for you to gain concept. So you grow up, 
expecting to meet Prince Charming. And you got that list, ladies. He gotta be six foot two. He gotta have biceps. He gotta smell good. Because if I'm gonna have to hold him and hug him, he can't, the flies can't be dying around him. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> he's gotta be a prayer warrior. And he's gotta know the word. Because that's a big. You know, gentlemen, this is an indictment against us. One of the biggest challenges for a woman to find is a man who knows more word than she does. Amen. What happened to us? Amen. How are we going to lead our families when all you know is Jesus wept? <laughs> uh, and on top of that, you don't even know why he wept, but he wept. <laughs> <laughs> so you have this whole list of things. And you get into a relationship, nothing wrong with having standards, because your life will never get better until you raise your standards. Some of you are you looking for better, but you have no standards. So as long as he's a man, oh yes, he's a man. Uh, two legs, yes, two legs. Apparatus, oh yeah, oh yeah. Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> see, see, you, you, you forgot to ask other things. How does this guy relate to authority? Who does he talk to? Who is in his life? Who knows him? What do his family say about him? Legitimate questions, but oh no, for you, he's a man. Like we were saying in Manchester, you feel it in your fingers. <laughs> You feel it in your tongue. Uh -huh. Afterwards, you're going to feel it somewhere else. Una vez más, gracias por haber visto el programa del día de hoy. Sé que ha sido de mucha bendición para ustedes, al igual que lo fue para mí. No dejen de mandarnos, no dejen de mandarnos sus peticiones de oración vía mail o vía telefónica, sus testimonios, sus peticiones de oración. Que Dios los bendiga y nos vemos la próxima. Thank you for watching Get Understanding with Ramson and Estrella Mumba. This broadcast has been made possible by friends, partners, and viewers like you in this area. We trust that you've been blessed and thank you in advance for your continued prayers and generous financial support. For information about our ministries or to download our free podcasts, visit us at www.elshaddaitoday.com.